Hey kids, welcome to lesson 17 in module four. And the objective today is to relate decimal and fraction multiplication. Now this is kind of a big lesson. There's a lot in it that relates decimals and fractions when multiplying. So I have a lot of review notes and then we kind of get into some important things. So if you have a minute to pause the video, just kind of write these things down to remind yourself of how fraction multiplication goes. If you have unit fractions, it's gonna be multiplying across the top, multiplying across the bottom, one times one is one, two times three is six, and so on. As we get down a little bit further, um, you start to notice that if we have certain denominators that they are not tenths, hundredths, or thousandths, and so we haven't been changing fractions into decimals. But today we're going to look for ways um, that the fractions and decimals are similar so that we can multiply and go back and forth. So for example, one tenth in a fraction looks like this, but one tenth in a decimal like this, two tenths, two tenths, eight tenths, eight tenths. So when you have more than one digit instead of eight, let's say you have 12, um, then you have to have your number land in this place value position when it becomes a decimal. So let's say I have 12 hundredths, then the two has to be in the hundredths position. What if I have 12 tenths? Well, then the two would have to be in the tenths place. So if you have a single digit in the hundredths place, seven hundredths, you have to go all the way over to the hundredths place before you put the seven down, okay? Same thing here, one one hundredth, put the one in the hundredths place. As a reminder, this is your place value chart that we'll be working with most for these. Of course, there are more positions, but we're really gonna be focused on these three positions here. Tenths is the first one to the right, hundredths is the second, thousandths is the third one to the right of the decimal. Why are they to the right? Because everything to the left of the decimal would represent whole numbers. The last one right before the decimal being the ones place. This is what you count on your fingers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine would go here. As soon as you have 10, a double digit, you bump one over, and then you have zero ones and one 10. And so we have this base 10 system. Since we use a base 10 system, going the opposite direction, if this is your last one that is a whole, then to the right of it is taking one and breaking it into 10 pieces. So these are what we call tenths. And I always say, don't spit on anybody when you say tenths, because you, you have to really get the THS on the end of those so that you know it's not the same position over here, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, etc. Now, so a little bit more with the notes. Again, just kind of rewriting them from fraction to decimal. What do they look like? 45 hundredths, 93 hundredths. That's easy when they have two digits and it goes two digits to the right. But what if you have 400 six hundredths? So what does that look like? Well, it has 406 all together. Don't change these digits at all, but it's the placement of the digits that's important. 406, but landing in the hundredths place. Then today, we also will be multiplying. And so it's really easy multiplication. It's like two times one and three times one and seven times one or 20 times one, 83 times one, whatever. It's gonna be times one, but we're gonna take this decimal value, recognize that when you see it in unit form, you have the place value name that goes with the number, and then also writing the answer in standard form. So if I have two times one tenth, that's two times one for two, and we would end up with tenths. Tenths times ones makes tenths. Two tenths looks like this, two tenths looks like this. So today is a very redundant lesson, okay? You can look at all these, again, same going across. Uh, just a reminder of place value, it's kind of confusing, I don't wanna spend a lot of time on that. Uh, works great when you're in class with me. Um, but again, taking one tenth and multiplying by four, one tenth by four is what you'll be writing. You get your four tenths and then you go back to the decimal form. So we go out from the decimals into the fractions and from fractions back to the decimals. And that's what all that is showing. Finally, 
we have just a quick little sample of what you'll be seeing today. Each of these 10 by 10 grids represents one. And it's one that's broken into, first of all, tenths vertically, and second of all, hundredths, because you have 10 pieces of 10. And so if I have one tenth of one tenth, that's where we're gonna be shading one here and one across, and the answer would be one one hundredth. I already shaded this one because I was showing two tenths times one tenth, and that's where you get two one hundredths. Probably just easier if we get into the book, so let's get into the book. So lesson 17, problem set. The objective, relate decimal and fraction multiplication, page 223, let's start. Also, if you have colored pencils today, really gonna help if you have colors that blend well together, where you, when you see the crisscross, um, you can have something pretty. <laughs> and here, remember, they have double shading. This is, uh, these are our directions, and then we're gonna do some shading here. We're gonna multiply and model. Model's already made, thank goodness, right? Uh, we're gonna rewrite each expression as a multiplication sentence with decimal factors. Okay, and that's gonna be on the bottom there. The first one is done for you. So there's work over here, there's work on the bottom, and you wanna show your final answer uh, representing that one one hundredth, which is here already, but we're gonna do it with decimals as well. Okay, so let's take our colored pencil so we can get ready to model our um, fractions. So four tenths is gonna be, if this is one tenth here, and this is two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, so you're going to take four of these and color down. Try to stay in the lines if you can. And we're going to multiply by three tenths. So it's three tenths of four tenths, or it's four tenths of three tenths, actually. If I read it left to right. And notice that the shading is just a bit different where they crisscross each other. Did that on purpose, hoping that it would make a nice pretty orange. It's a little bit orange. And so now let's look at the math. We're going to take these and we're going to put them into fractions over with one bar. So it's the 4 times 3 on the top and the 10 times 10 on the bottom. Then go ahead and multiply. 4 times 3 is 12 and 10 times 10 is 100. And see that you have this matching answer, this matching fraction answer. One, two, three, four, and four times three is 12. So these are the 12 hundredths that are the answer. So how do I write that with a decimal uh, number being each factor? Four tenths looks like this, times three tenths, which looks like this. Now what does our answer look like? Well, look at the fraction form, and it's 12, but it's 12 hundredths. So 0 0.12 tenths hundredths. Make sure you have your numbers or digits in the right place. That's what we're trying to do today. Now, just when you think you have a fraction times fraction and you're all good, guess what? They love to throw something new at you. So now we have a whole number and a decimal. So it's one tenth times one and four tenths, which we also if we rewrite, one and four tenths. Now remember, if you make something into a simple fraction, you don't have to have this mixed number. So what I would do here is I would have 10 times one for 10, or 10 tenths, plus the four. So I would have 14 tenths. And look at this, 14 ending in the tenths place. So really it's one tenth times 14 tenths. And that's my, my first uh, fraction multiplication. Now I can rewrite it 1 times 14 over 10 times 10, and I can have my final fraction answer 14 hundredths. Now let's model that. So what is uh, 1 tenth of 1 and 4 tenths? Well, thank goodness they gave us a big uh, couple of blocks here. These would be like what I call waffle blocks, okay? And so you basically just want to color the whole thing in, but we also need four more tenths. One, two, three, four. So color in lightly four more. 
And then we're gonna take one tenth of that. So opposite direction and only for one of them. There you go. And now we have this, which also continues on right over here. Look at where they're double shaded, okay? So I have 14 hundredths. Now let's give ourselves some space here because we have to write this as a decimal problem. So if it's one tenth times, now here's one tenth, that's easy enough, but 14 tenths. So it's already in decimal form. I'm not writing anything in fraction form. I'm just trying to show my final answer in the proper places. So 14 times one is 14. So the digits won't change, it's their location. It's 14 hundredths. So this is gonna be in the hundredths place. If this is tenths, that means you put the decimal here and back yourself out with a zero there. Okay, I hope this is coming along for you. And then let's do D. Six tenths times one and seven tenths. Same thing here. If we have six tenths, leave that alone, times one and seven tenths, which that can become 10 times one is 10 plus seven. So it's gonna be six tenths times 17 tenths, okay? And then knowing that this is gonna be the whole number and the fraction, six times 17 over 10 times 10, I really wanna put 100, but I'll rewrite it again. And then we have to do, sometimes you're gonna have extra uh, steps. You might not be able to do it in your head. Go ahead and do the standard algorithm on the side. If you do know how to do um, horizontal multi multiplication, it's gonna be the ones places times each other. Six times seven is 42. That four would come up over the tens place. Six times one is six plus four is 10. And then you can have your final 100 on the bottom. Now let's model that. So this is all of the one and seven tenths. So I need seven more this time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which leaves three unshaded. Color it all in. It's nice when it doesn't look too messy. And then, of course, your red would be the uh, six tenths across the bottom. So, or you can have that across the top again, it does not matter, but we just need to have six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. And it's all the way across both of these squares, or waffles, or whatever you wanna call them, okay? So it's gonna be shading this way. because our answer lies in the double shaded region. Not the red only, not the yellow only, but where they're crisscrossed, okay? Now let's take this and write it out with decimals. Six tenths is our first factor. Six tenths, six tenths, times one and seven tenths. And we know that six times 17, we just did that over here and it's 102. Okay, so you could write 102. Don't put the decimal yet. Think about where the decimal would go if you have 102 hundredths. If this has to be in the hundredths place, then where would the decimal go? If this is tenths, this is hundredths, then the decimal goes here because we have to have the proper label or placement for each digit. 102 hundredths has two in the hundredths place. Okay, I hope that is pretty okay for you. Now, just when you think you got the hang of things, you can put your pencils away because we change into just doing the math. And some of you guys are like, yes, I hate doing those models. Oops, there goes my phone. I hate doing those models. They're kind of a hassle. I don't like to color, whatever. But now we're just gonna use the numbers. So if you liked the model, pay close attention. Okay, we have, um, thankfully, a start for each one, and please pay attention to what we're multiplying. This is five ones, this is five tenths, and this is five hundredths. The other factor, seven tenths, seven tenths, seven tenths, stays the same. So fraction-wise, 
same, same, same. Different from here to here to here. Watch how they change it all the way through. So if I have five times seven tenths, five times seven over 10, do the multiplication, get 35 tenths. Now I have 35 tenths, which you can move it up here if you want. That one's basically all done. Five tenths times seven tenths. So we make fractions out of it. Again, rewrite it. Now we can solve. Seven times five, we already know it's 35. They already did it for you here. Solve the bottom, 100. And then if I have 35 hundredths, think about the difference between the first one. Oh, it's all blurry. Stop that. Think about the difference between the first one and the second one. There we go. Has that been blurry the whole time? I wish somebody was here to tell me. Okay, anyway, 35 hundredths, 0 0.35, because the 5 has to end in the hundredths place. Go ahead and mark that up here, 35 hundredths. And then let's move on. 5 one hundredths, and again, these are going to be the same type of thing. They're not changing the numbers. We're just looking across. Make sure you write the right fraction. Right fraction, 7 times, oops, 5 times 7, 110. Then we have 35, but now we have something new, 100 times 10. What is that? Remember back in module one, lesson one, one times one is one and count the zeros if you want to do it that way. But 100 times 10 is 1,000. And then 35 thousandths. Now think here, where does the decimal go? Where do the digits go? 35 has to be three positions to the right, 35. That means when you back it in, you have to have a zero in the tenths place. Tenths, hundredths, thousandths, just like that. Okay, let's do another one. If I have six ones times three tenths, okay, that looks a whole lot like the first one did. Now I'm going to have my six times three over 10, and I'm going to solve it, and it'll be 18 tenths which I'm out of room, so it's gonna be 18 tenths in standard form, 1.8. Moving over to here, I start out with 6 tenths and 3 tenths multiplying. Rewrite it with 6 times 3 over 10 times 10. Solve it, 18 over 100. Now what does 18 hundredths look like? 18 hundredths has the 8 in the hundredths place. Second position over, okay? Over here to the third one. I have 6 hundredths, so write your fraction, times 3 tenths. Rewrite 6 times 3 over 100 times 10. 6 times 3 we know is 18, and 100 times 10 we also know from up here it's 1,000. So what does 18 thousandths look like? Think, think, think. 0 0.018, all smashed and wiggly, 0 0.018, because I have to get to the thousandths place. Very important. Next one. Okay, now we have a whole number, which we haven't had before. I'm going to just put it straight into a fraction over this place value position so that you can start your multiplying right away. Okay, you don't have to do a mixed number, one and two tenths. Nope, we're just going to do 12 tenths. Remember, what's the name of the place value position where it ends? That's your denominator. 12 tenths times four. Okay, it's four over one. So it's going to be 12 times four over 10. Multiply and get 48 over 10, or 48 tenths, and then we don't have any room, so we're going to do 48 tenths. Why does it look like that? Because this is the tenths place, and we have to have tenths, that's our denominator, so that's the value of our answer, 4.8. Okay? Again, 1 and 2 tenths, I know people will say 1.2, but it really will help you if you read it properly. It's 12 tenths, when it's renamed for this place value position, times 4 tenths, and we have 12 times 4 over 10 times 10. Then multiply and get 48 over 100, and then rewrite it as a decimal, 48 hundredths. 
make it match the place value. I think you guys are getting this. I can just feel it. I feel it that you're getting it. Now this one, look, watch. Uh-oh, look out. Look out. It's not 12 tenths anymore. It's 12 hundredths. Okay, and we have four tenths, same as this one, but different from this one. Four tenths. So we have 12 times four over 100 times 10. Now solve. 48 over 1,000 and write it as a decimal. 48 thousandths, remember we have to get three positions over. 48 has to be in the third position for the eight. Tenths, hundredths, thousandths. Okay, you're doing great, almost done. A Boy Scout has a length of rope measuring seven tenths of a meter. He uses two tenths of the rope to tie a knot at one end. How many meters of rope are in the knot? Two tenths of the seven tenths. Two tenths of the seven tenths. Now you know that of is just a fancy word for multiply. So if it's two tenths of seven tenths in fraction form, it would look like this, okay? And if you're real familiar with that, you can solve it that way, or you can solve it this way, okay? But either way, and whoops, if you, sorry, I should have written two times seven so that we have our consistency, and then it's 14 over 100, okay? And then for your decimal, 14 hundredths would be how much rope uh, 14 hundredths of a meter is in the knot. Okay, and the OT cannot. Okay, and again, getting our decimal answer, we'll be working just with decimals pretty soon, but today we're connecting the fractions to the decimal. So two times seven, you know, is 14, and then tenths times tenths would make the hundredths. So this is just the decimal way, but we're really just connecting today. Last one. After just four tenths of a two and five tenths mile race was completed, Lennox took the lead and remained there until the end of the race. How many miles did Lennox lead the race? Okay, so four tenths is, has happened, okay? Which means there are six tenths left. So, Pay close attention to how they're setting this up. If you wanted to uh, make a tape diagram, okay, and we have tenths, so you could split your race into ten pieces in half first and then five on each side. Or five and then one, two, three, four, five. After just four tenths, so this is la la la, la la la, he's, he's running. But after this point, Lennox took the lead. And then he remained there until the end of the race. So he's leading for here. And this is where we're, we're getting that six tenths. So how many miles did he lead the race? Well, it's six tenths of the two and five tenths. Now, you know when you have a mixed number like this that you can just rename it to 25 tenths so that um, you have just a fraction and you're ready to multiply. And so you can rewrite six times 25 over 10 times 10, all in one piece. It's basically the exact same thing that you're doing here, which I'm just trying to be consistent. Think about quarters, think about money. Four quarters make a dollar, so plus two more would be a dollar 50 or 150 over 100, because 10 times 10 is 100. And then if you have 150 hundredths, what does that look like in a decimal? Got get to the hundredths place right there. 150 hundredths. So, how many miles did Lennox lead the race? One and five tenths, or one and 50 hundredths, but really, when you have a zero there, you can drop that off. Uh, one and five tenths miles for the lead, or held the lead. He held the lead. 1.5 miles. Oops, there I said it, 1.5. It's just so easy. Okay, anyway. Oh, Reed, the second place finisher, poor guy, developed a cramp with three tenths of the race remaining. How many miles did Reed run without a cramp? 
So if it was 3 tenths left, then it was 7 tenths doing fine. So if the race is, again, 2.5 miles, which is 25 tenths, then it's 7 tenths of 25 tenths that he ran fine. So again, moving ahead to our formatting, set it up so you can multiply. And we already know that 6 times 25 is 150. It's only one more 25. Add another quarter. You're at the vending machine. What are you going to do? 175 over 100, which is 1.75 because it's 1 and 75 hundredths miles without a cramp. Bravo. All right. Click subscribe. Come back again. I hope these videos are helpful. And uh, next time, lesson 18. Have a great day. Bye for now.